They are under fire right now. It was fighters. This is crazy. Mark Hunt, a.k.a. the Super Samoan, member lost to Brock Lesnar earlier in the month. And afterwards, it was revealed that Lesnar was popped for banned substances. Well, Hunt speaking out against the UFC, it continues. The way I see it, the Brock Lesnar doping thing is just another reason why we need a fighters association. These guys are just making up the rules as they go, which... You know, all love to Dana White, but it's a yep. dictatorship, right? It, it is. And I actually brought this up to Dana White maybe two years ago in one of our interviews when uh, the wages were being suppressed. And, you know, they start right. Bellator. And, and I'm looking around. I'm saying not only are they suppressed, it seems that way, but how come it's not public knowledge what these guys are doing in terms of compensation? Like, you got these guys losing orbital bones and fractured foreheads. And you're like, how much did you make for that? Oh, I don't know that answer. I always had a problem with that. And I have a problem when you take a drug test on June 28th, and we fight on July 9th, and you're trying to tell me you couldn't find out those right. results mm. and then suspend that guy before I have to go in there with that super machine? And that's a problem for Mark Hunt because he's done it before with Brock Lesnar. He did it before with Frank Mir. This is not his first rodeo, so I get where he's coming and, from. And, and a lot of fighters are leaving the UFC and going to Bellator now for that reason because they just have a different system going on over at the UFC. In general, general, you can look at the Reebok deal and all the stuff. Guys not getting paid. Right. Now you have a, a situation where a guy failed a test long before it ever happened and still get a chance to fight. Look, I understand Mark Hunt. I, I get where, he, where he's coming from. First of all, he lost. He lost, you know, he lost bad. So, and, right. and then Brock Lesnar made two and a half million. Oh, you want some of that two and a half million back, especially <laughs> if a guy failed a test. Right. I get it and understand, but, you know, if anyone needs a, a system in place right now, it's probably the UFC with the problems they're having. It, it has to be because... They just sold the UFC for four plus billion dollars. Right. So now you're on yeah, you're, billion. You're, you said billion. Right? Billion okay. with the, with the, with the B. With the B. So oh. now you're at a level where people are looking at you, and now you're a company that's worth something. So in order to do that, the fighters have the opportunity now to come together and say, "Look, moving forward, this is a, a mainstream type of of, of, of sport now." Moving forward, we need to come together collectively, say we're not fighting anymore unless some guidelines are in place, a fighters association is in place, so they can fight for us. Yeah. We're going out it there seems... almost killing each other, right. and we, you know... You need somebody to yeah, stand up for who's you. Who's going to do that? Like, how easy well, is it to actually get that? You're right, Mama. It, look, you need someone tough. to police the police. Now, yep, even if right. Dana White is doing no wrong, you still need some checks and balances mm -hmm. because you said it. In the major sports, we're talking about ten plus billion dollar economies. We talk about the NFL. You talk about the NBA. You talk about Major League Baseball. You just sold for four plus billion. Right. You're, you're now there. Entering you're that there. Territory, yep. And we need someone representing those athletes. And it wasn't important back then because the money wasn't as great. Now mm -hmm. that they're starting to get paid, the guys were a long time ago wasn't getting two and a half million. Mm -hmm. right. oh, no. These guys are starting to get paid now, so you need a union in place. Yep. Uh, coming up in four minutes. Four. It's a long commercial break. Sports Nation is presented by Toyota. This is real, you guys. Mm. We're on television. Welcome to Sports Nation. Michelle Beadle. The three amigos. Hey. That, you guys. Yeah, oh, did you do the whole? Yeah, we all go all in. I missed it. <laughs> yeah, we go. Ethan oh, God, Plum, that's not good. Sean Merriman. Of course, Marcellus Wiley. The last one to show up today. I just want to point that out. Oh, oh that's, uh, that's under the bus. Really? You're coming with the truth. Hard, cold facts. Paddle down. Watch my steps. I like it so much. This is very beefy, very meaty. Um, We're going to start the show with some beef. Is that objective? Did you like that? I just added, like that? I added oh, it. Hey. Oh, yeah. Latest edition of GQ, Odell Beckham Fresh Jr. Outfit, talks. I, get House, I know, I like it. Okay. I get uh, he gets caught though. up with a Kardashian and, of course, his nemesis, Josh Norman, saying his future division rival, the reason Norman's become so relevant is because of me. Yes. Wow. Just in time. Wow. What do you think? You like it? I, I, I love it. You know what? I know both of these guys, and I know there's a genuine hate. <laughs> it, it really is. It's genuine hate on and off the field. And this is the reason. Josh Norman is a football guy. He believes you should shut up, go out there and play football and do your thing. And he despises everything that Odell does. The dancing, the showboat and all that. Odell's going to be who he is. He has his own personality. But don't ever expect these guys to be friends until they retire. They're not squashing any beef. As long as they're in this division, they will hate each other. This hate will go on, and they will not ever have a sit-down and be friends until they retire. But how can you love this when you, you, I, we all know how hard it is to make it. We right. know how hard right. it is to yep. make it. And your ego is so big and so off-center that you actually think you made somebody else, and on top of that, you think that you got him paid? I love to it. me, that is crazy, and that means your feet are a little too high off the ground. With that said, this is a little too little, too
too late. If you talk about, why are you talking about this in July when y'all had beef on the field last season? And we saw who won that beef, right? right. So right. when Meek Mill got five diss tracks out right now, as he currently does, about Drake, and nobody is giving a damn, you know why? You lost. Because you're a little too little too late with that. I, I, and I don't think Odell Beckham actually made Josh Norman. What made Josh Norman was he was one of the top defensive players on one of the best teams in the regular season last yep. year. Yep. When you start looking at that record and you're 12-0, and 13-0 and and all of that, and you, you're the type of player that teams are trying to come after and you're standing up and you're fighting, that's what makes you as a player. Not that little fight, that little skirmish they had. I get it. I love it. I love the intense battle. It went a little bit overboard. Yeah. But for Odell Beckham, he needs to worry about what's going on in New York and seeing if they can make some noise because they are quiet. I, I, right I now. like it, though. It's, it's like be, a heel turn. It, it is. It's yeah. going like to be a game within the game. People are going to be watching of that course. matchup. They don't care about the other 10 guys that's on the field on both sides. They're going to be watching that matchup because it's going to be a game within the game. These guys really just don't like each other, period. But it wasn't even a game within the game last time because over there, Odell went overboard. Odell got suspended. So think right. about it. When we're trash talking, we know there's still some rules right. involved with that. And mm -hmm. the rules of engagement were violated by Odell then and just now with this article. Yeah, but I, 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 didn't, I didn't like Ephraim. I didn't like I, you. I didn't I like you. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, we hung out after the game or I talked to him during the offseason. I don't the ball know. I didn't like all that lights out, all that jumping around and turning the lights on and all well, you know, I mean, he never turned the lights out on me just to throw that out there Hold and on, put that out there. Did he ever get a sack on you? No, no, no. Nah, we, I know. We need no, to no, check no, that. No, no. Seriously, Are we, we need sure? to. No, I research. think so. We, we got to check that. Get research on that. All right. We got to ask No wonder you retired or. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how we're segueing, but we actually have some serious news. Okay. I'm glad the right. three of you are here for this. Hmm. Players Tribune today, seven-year NFL vet Eugene Monroe announced his retirement at the age of 29. His reasons for retiring sound pretty familiar, citing concern for his health and his future. He writes, quote, has the damage to my brain already been done? Do I have CTE? I hope I don't, but over 90% of the brains of former NFL players that have been examined showed signs of the disease. I am terrified. So here we are, another young player out of the game. Your immediate reaction? It, it's, it scares me. It scares me not only for him, but for all of us. When I saw, sat down and saw that movie Concussion, it, it almost yeah. paralyzed me mm. because I feel great. You know, we all feel good. We're up here doing our job, and we have our, our wits about us. But at any moment, it's, it feels like you can wake up and not know where you are or, or what's going on. We all have our memory problems. Like, I found myself in the grocery store standing up there looking at the box of cereal. Like, why am I? What, what am I supposed to get? Mm. And, it, and it, it, happens, it happens to us all. But the fact that the research, they have the information now. When we were playing, we didn't have the information that exactly. the younger the generation has now. So they're able to make an educated decision in terms of, hey, look, is it worth it? Are the gains or all the millions of dollars in, in the fame, is it worth your, your long-term effect and quality of life? Yeah, I mean, look, being a, a teammate and a friend of Junior Seau, Absolutely. obviously this comes really close to yeah. me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you're right, we, you start to do the mirror imaging of what did he go through and what did I go through and the parallels, and you start to go there, and it really takes you to a place of anxiety. Um, but I do know that the goals have changed with NFL players, and let's just be real. I retired at the age of 32. People were saying that's a little young back then, and this is mm -hmm. 2006. What happened is when we first got in the league, everyone was saying ball till you fall. Yeah, I remember yes. hearing that everywhere. I went ball yeah, till you fall. Ball that means play until play. you, you can't yep, play anymore. Right. And now I hear people say it ends when you get 10. You know what the 10 is? 10 million in the bank as the financial advisors oh, wow. tell the players. Once you got 10 saved up, hey, everything else is gravy. You know why? If you get 13, 15, 20, your lifestyle hasn't changed. But if you give me 10, I can spit up to up to a million dollars in interest every year. You'll keep this lifestyle. You'll pay for everything going forward, and you'll be great. I'm starting to see Calvin Johnson, yeah. Eugene Monroe, mm -hmm. and others are getting to that threshold and taking. And, 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 take and I retired at 28. You know, so yeah. I completely understand. But I retired because of injuries, and I couldn't perform like I did. I blew out my knee and I blew out my Achilles, and I just could never play like I used to. But if someone gave me the option to play a couple more years, I would. Uh -huh. No question about it. But seeing him and saying he's been through 18 years of, of physical trauma, body and head. And I never had any head injuries, but body and tearing your knee. I mean, we all have had some knee problems and tearing your Achilles and not being able to go out there and compete on the same level anymore. I just couldn't go out there to training camp. I couldn't go out there to practice. I couldn't stay in a coach. My teammates looking at me standing on the sideline because my Achilles flared up and I, I just couldn't go anymore. Right. So I understand him retiring. And at 28, I get it. I still have a long life ahead of me. And fortunately, I never had 
had anything going on in my head, but I see guys who's retired recently mm -hmm. and having problems already, and that is scary. Let me ask you this, because I think the, the normal human suffers from a little bit of hypochondria. You know, we get a headache, we think the worst case scenario. Oh, absolutely. Right. So for you guys, mm -hmm. it, how much worse is that? Whenever something goes wrong, you wake up, you got a, a throbbing headache or your shoulder or your back, it's always the worst case scenario for me. Yeah. And, and you said that, you know, you've never had any head uh, injuries, but we all have. That, that we, that's that the I scary part. part. For, that right, I but that's the scary for. part. Yeah. Back when we were playing, guys didn't come out of the game for concussions. No, that was that uh, was uh, unheard of. That, no. You were considered right. soft. Right. If you got ding, you came to the side. I've seen it a hundred. It's happened to me. I've seen it a hundred times. You come, you don't know what's going on. They sit you down on the bench. They make sure you're okay, and then you go back into the game. And it got so bad when they first implemented the rule that when you have head trauma th now. They take you completely out of the game. Yeah, right. I was questioning that. Yeah. I was like, look at these soft guys. Right. These guys are out there soft because I didn't understand. That was our mentality. That was then. our mentality. Right, right. But now I, the kudos to the league and, and the neurologist saying, hey, look, if a guy gets hit and, and he's, he's woozy, he he's done. Right. Okay, yeah. but let's talk about, let's couple that with the orthopedic issues because, all right, the brain issues may be coming. Mm -hmm. They may be looming, but I don't know yet. Like, right now, I feel like I have my faculties. I have my capacities. But how about the warm-up that you have to do oh, just to Lord. get out of bed every morning? Ooh, like, oh, yeah. I am 41 years old, and why am I doing yoga in my own bedroom <laughs> just to make sure I can pick up my son when I walk across, yeah. the, across the house? And that's the problem also. You just don't know your mess mesmerized by the experience, by the love yeah. of the game, mm -hmm. but it is taking a does toll. The, does it the does. $10 million stay, or do we start to aim at the age now? Or do you, which one do you start to advise? You know what? I think that right now, these guys are making more money than oh, we ever so made, right. and it is going to continue so these, to grow. These, these contracts are coming in one year. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you're going to see football million. players retire a lot earlier, yeah. and it's going to continue with that trend, because guys are going to get to a certain place and say, what else am I doing it for? Right. Yeah, yeah. They the, the whole sentiment, like you said, was play until they kick you out, mm -hmm. right? That was the whole thing. I'm going to hold on till, till they yep. make me leave. Yep. Now it's like I'm going to hold on, I'm going to make some money, change my, my family's future, and then I'm out of here. I'm going to do something else. Yep. We'll have more Sports Nation after this. Yeah. Leave the game before the game leaves you. Sports Nation is presented by Toyota. Let's go places.